Hey what's going on guys Tanmaya for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on digital electronics boolean algebra and logic gates so in this video tutorial i'm going to answer the question of what is a clock in digital electronics so in the previous couple of video tutorials we've started off with sequential circuit in this entire playlist and we've also seen a basic flip flop and how a flip flop works so as we move ahead in this playlist it is very important that you understand the concept of clock in digital electronics because in further video tutorials when we see different types of flip flops and other sequential circuits the concept of clock is going to come in almost every video tutorial so if you don't know what theoretically clock means this is the video tutorial that you have to see and it's going to be a quick short theoretical video so make sure you watch it till the end so that you completely understand this concept so with that being said let's get started with this video so as you can see on the screen i have three different points in three different colors which are theoretical points on clock and i'm just going to go ahead and read through it and then later on explain to you what exactly they mean so starting off with the first point in digital electronics and specially synchronous digital circuits by synchronous i mean circuits which are in synchronization with each other which communicate with each other and are dependent on each other so they are basically sequential most of them are sequential circuits so a clock is basically a clock signal is a particular type of signal that oscillates between high and low since it is a digital circuit we have binary values that is 0 and 1 so it oscillates between high and low state and is used to coordinate actions of digital circuit So essentially they are used to coordinate the communication between different digital circuits. Simple enough. Let's move to point number 2. A clock signal is produced by a clock generator. So it is a separate circuit which generates this signals. Now although more complex arrangements are used, the most common clock signal is in the form of square wave with 50% duty cycle. So I'll explain to you what 50% duty cycle is. And a square wave is something like this which I have already drawn over here. So this is an illustration of what a square wave looks like and it is usually having a fixed and constant frequency so frequency is 1 by t and t is the time period so in this example you can see that this is going to be the time period time period is the time required for the signal to complete one cycle so from low to high so this is going to be the time period and frequency is equal to 1 by t so this concept is something that you already must be knowing in physics and in other science subjects and the last theoretical point is circuits using the clock signal for synchronization may be active at either the rising edge falling edge or in case of double data rate both in rising and the falling edges of the clock cycle and also at a particular level so this is something which we'll see in the next video tutorial that is the triggering methods and techniques that we use to trigger the flip flop using this clock so right now let's just understand what a clock is so as i mentioned the clock is basically a circuit which generates this signal you can see t is the time period now this is the low state so this is 0 and this is 1 so the clock oscillates from 0 it goes to 1 it stays 1 for certain amount of time and then it comes back to 0 okay now there are different characteristics of this clock in terms of the oscillation some terms are as follows when the clock goes from 0 to 1 it is known as leading edge similarly when the clock goes from 1 to 0 it is known as falling edge and when it is high for a certain amount of time it is known to be at level 1 or level high level 1 or high similarly when it is at level 0 it is known as it is at level 0 or low level so these are certain keywords that you need to remember now how do we use these clocks to synchronize circuits so let's say we have a flip flop so let me just draw a flip flop over here i'm just using the block diagram and not the actual circuit so we have two inputs let's say this is a sr flip flop okay we have the outputs so this is q and q bar now we've already covered the basic sr flip flop in the previous video tutorial so if you have missed you can check it out so this ff stands for flip flop now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add one more input pin which is no, going to be known as the clock pin so the short form is clk for clock you'll see this used many times in the further video tutorials and in digital electronics so clk stands for clock so what this clock does is we can use or we can construct this flip flop in such a way that it works only when the clock is high okay or we can construct this flip flop in such a way that the sr flip flop works only when the clock is low or we can also make it work depending upon the leading edge or falling edge so the sr flip flop is turned on only when the clock signal goes from 0 to 1 or it goes from 1 to 0 something like that so that is depending upon the triggering methodologies and we will see that in the further video but for now you understand that that this clock acts as a on off switch of this flip flop so that we control the working and synchronization of the flip flop so only 
Similarly, when we want the flip flop to change the state or to retain the state, we make the use of clock. Otherwise, we keep the clock off and then the flip flop doesn't generate any undesirable output. So that's how we achieve that synchronization. So, so that gives you a level of control on the flip flop. So because you don't want any unwanted input and unwanted output situation in a flip flop, which stores a memory, right? You don't want your data to be corrupted. So using clock, we can control our flip flops and our sequential circuit devices and they work according to the input of the clock. So this was just a basic theory of how clock helps in synchronization and controlling of the sequential circuits. In the next video tutorial, we'll see the different triggering methodologies that we can use along with these flip flops and other sequential circuits. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the theoretical concept of clock and how it helps in synchronization and controlling of sequential circuits. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials coming up on this channel and you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.